Hey everybody, uh, anyway, uh, I'm redoing episode 3, and I greatly apologize to those who had watched the previous version of episode 3 that I took down, because uh, I was extremely dissatisfied with how it was coming along, mostly because I had it in my head, like a lot of episodes I do, that I got all the information going on in my head. Well, turns out I had to do some homework yesterday, and I had to read several issues, uh, like entire issues to cover Ms. Marvel because she was an incredibly complex character with a lot of emotional baggage and uh, a lot of different situations uh, and she reacts differently to quite a few and just uh, it's she basically had a lot of uh, emotional damage in the past and it's kind of made her yo-yo around between uh, being happy and hating her life so ah okay i think i got that out of the way um okay last episode i showed you that uh ben and sharon ventura they defeated his character named uh <clears throat> excuse me facade who was a, he's basically a character that became uh a, a series of electrons uh through some one of your typical superhero supervillain accidents uh, and can infiltrate pretty much everything, whether it's your TV, you know, your iPod, and all that. Well, he had the satellite ready to go and destroy people, but they stopped it. But as revenge, Facade takes over their um, space shuttle, gonna try and crash it. Ben's a pilot; he knows uh, how to best not to crash. Um, cosmic rays poke at him. They're like, oh boy. Let's just drink in the greatness that is Keith Pollard. Uh, he and Joe Sinna are doing this issue. Lettering by John Workman. Whew, doesn't get any better. And he transforms to a further version of himself, which is uh, kind of gruesome. But it it's nice because it's a new status quo. And it really trips him out. But... Uh, Sharon got hit with uh, cosmic rays and now has the the same kind of hide and appearance as Ben Grimm did when he started off in Fantastic Four number one and um, it's really this was a great shock ending because I was reading the book regularly and uh, nobody saw that come I, I, I thought that was genius um, Okay, before I turn the page, I just want to say something. She does not react well to it, and she wants to harm and or, uh, you know, end her life. And that that's never a good answer. I just want to say, if, if anybody contemplates suicide or has thoughts of suicide, please seek help. There's a variety of ways you can do it, and, uh, you know, you're not alone. Uh, there's always somebody who will look out for you. So I wanted to get that out of the way, okay? Because um, she uh, is going through a very hard time processing this information. And, uh, well, she says, I want to die. She jumps off the cliff. As an aside, that's a nice cover. I think that was, uh, I don't know if that was Pollard or Ron Friends who's doing them regularly. Well, and she tries to do everything to take herself out. Ben talks some sense into her because she's very distraught, understandably. He goes, Sherry, we've both been mutated, both being kicked one level up by the cosmic rays. You don't see me trying to do nothing stupid, but you were already a monster. Uh, you, I pulled through, and you will too. But Ben, I was screwed up before, but that was in, only in my mind. I, I could still lose myself in my body, but even that's gone. And... Uh, you know, uh, Jen, uh, Jen, Ben is being very, gentle Ben is being very gentle to her in understanding. Long story with the fight scene here. I just wanted to show off this cool page of Black Panther. Well, out of the blue, Dr. Doom shows up. And uh, the weird, the reason he doesn't get thrown out right then and there is because he is a monarch and he is a monarch. So it's one of those dicey things that if you get too much 
uh, you could cause a war between nations. It's sort of like that kind of relationship. And uh, I mean, the Panthers are not thrilled about it, but that's how he sees his position as uh, chief of uh, all of Wakanda. Well, in front of everybody, this was kind of, I thought it was kind of dopey. In front of everybody, practically, um, you know, they, they, they see Doom, wants to meet up with Ms. Marvel, and he says, I can recover you to the woman you were, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, she basically says, you're trapped in this prison of flesh, but I am your superior, and if you join me, we, we will be able to punish Fantastic Four. What? You know, she tells him, ah, go to hell, blah, 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 blah. And he's ready to react, but Black Panther says, this is my land. He goes, uh, Ms. Marvel 2 is my guest, Doctor. Do you understand me? I understand um, that you and I need not fight Prince of the Wakandas. And uh, she's a little embarrassed, and she's uh, still just reeling from her transformation. She says, I almost forgot my honor, Ben. I would have would have failed hold me Ben I need someone to trust or Dr. Doom and X Factor and uh, I this is when crossovers were just getting really obnoxious and just forcing their way into other stories um, there was a time especially in the late 90s when John Byrne uh, was going to maybe come back to the FF for a while um he changed his mind because he found out that he, even though he liked to plan a year's worth of comics in advance, certainly laudable, uh, that wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna make it in the world of uh, constant crossovers and events that go on. Where, uh, when you think of it, the um, the Marvel Universe shouldn't even still be around after all the you know every, every four times a year you get a crossover which. Nothing will be the same. Took a big old swig of water. Well, later in this episode, things happen. And uh, Ben gets put... Ben. I just say because she looks like Ben. Sharon and the Beast from X Factor are imprisoned by Doctor Doom. Uh, he's like, uh, oh, you're strong enough to break free. She goes, I can't. I don't know how. You mean you won't? And uh, she's just still, I mean, everything's still so new to her. So uh, the Beast is going to go jump through uh, out this uh, cube that was holding them in. But she stops him. I'll do something only a monster can do. And then a classic pose for uh, Dr. Doom. Keith Pollard, he has a very jump of seven style. He's one of those guys who really um, the fans have kind of forgotten about. It. Well, mostly because they're geezers like me. And, uh, well, I still got to take a drink of water. I apologize. Well, she saw how the beast was reacting to try and take his life if it meant breaking the uh, the box, the energy box that they were trapped in. Well, she just was so impressed, she says, but he's been a mutant all his life, suffering. Suffered for it all his life. And still, he was trying to do good right to the end. And who am I to do, to be any less? You mean, yes, no more moaning. Let's get on with being the Fantastic Four. And in fact, several issues later, you know, she's adjusted. She's got the Ms. Marvel costume, sort of, with that Dave Cockrum sash that we all know and love. Um, he didn't design her. I just threw that in there because every Ms. Marvel has a sash. But I don't remember if the new one does. Well... They have a lot of adventures together with Sharon, you know, doing her bit. She's a full, uh, she gets more and more confident with each uh, battle. And 
Now this just came out like two months ago. And you see a lot going on there. Frightful 4. Um, I kind of miss the Trapster. I mean, he, he's kind of silly, but they got some real badasses here. Um, in fact, I almost feel like they over they would overwhelm the FF, but it's not the name. The, the, the book is not called The, Fr the Frightful 4. Bleh. <coughs> Gosh. Golly, golly. Mm, horrible. Sorry. Um... Well, it's been like two years that uh, she, as Ms. Marvel and as she thing, uh, was in the book as a member. Well, what happened along the way is Ben Grimm changed back to Ben Grimm, formerly the thing. He's like, oh my God, I'm naked. So he uh, he changes, and uh, what happens is. You know, he struggles with uh, helping his teammates uh, win. A lot of stuff goes down. Uh, th th this is not crucial, okay? But basically the status quo is that this uh, lumpy version of Ms. Marvel is there to stay. And Ben is still Ben for the remainder of this storyline goes all the way into the Walt Simonson storyline uh, and because uh, what's interesting is when a lot of creators take over they forget everything that happened before they give it it's like a dry erase uh, marker board where you can just rub it out and you know, uh, 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 uh. well Simonson took on uh, keeping uh, Ms. Marvel uh, the thing version and Ben Grimm as Ben Grimm and uh, there was a, a really good reason for it, but I'm not going to tell you now. So uh, anyway, uh, I will do a fourth version because uh, there's still more to go on. <laughs> I hope I hope my uh, uh, didn't turn you off to doing other ones. I, I do put a lot of time into this. And when I say it was my second take, I meant to say it's my second fully recorded one. I must have done 20 of these, and that's why my... My epiglottis tickles so much in my throat. And, uh, well, see you next episode. Won't be long.